Some of the bravest men and women take the front lines to defend our country. And behind them, some of the greatest minds working to save lives. Steve Garagiola takes us inside a local place where the state-of-the-art military technology is born. The work of making the United States Army and Marine Corps the most efficient and powerful forces in the world is quietly happening on Mound Road in Warren at TARDEC. So TARDEC is the Tank Automotive Research Development and Engineering Center. Whew, that's a mouthful. TARDEC is the place where much of the military's cutting edge technology is born. They test vehicles in extreme environmental conditions. Temperatures 60 below zero to the 150 degrees troops encounter in the desert. A filtration lab to measure vulnerability to dust. But most of the work here is on robotics. So we work on several different size robots from little ones the size of like your Roomba robotic vacuum all the way up into like the giant trucks like you'd see in a mining or construction operation. In discussing robotics and the military, it's an easy leap of the imagination to the robot armies of Star Wars. Is that where we're headed? In the realm of the possible, it's all out there, but I don't think it's going to be in my lifetime. <laughs> Current military robotic applications are a little more down to earth. Primary mission for a lot of the smaller robots is for EOD or explosive ordnance disposal. And for larger robot vehicles? Potentially carry armaments, carry uh, food, um, backpacks. So you might load it up with your rut sacks, extra water, extra fuel, extra batteries. So now that the soldiers are burdened with carrying all this equipment through the woods or the desert. Not as exciting as legions of robot soldiers, but technology that saves lives. Everything is so automated in the vehicle. I got a chance to try out a simulator where engineers refine driverless vehicle technology tackling a challenge the auto companies don't face in designing for city streets. We don't have that luxury on, on the battlefield. You know, we can't say, time out, bad guys. We want to go into your country, map it to 10 centimeter resolution, and then go back and, and drive through it in the battle. Little things that you can do on the interior vehicles in, in particular, uh, I mean, just to save somebody a few minutes might mean the difference between life and death to somebody. The students here at CCS in downtown Detroit have a clear assignment. They push us to think outside the box and push beyond this and get as abstract as you can and then narrow it down from there. A lot of these designers from CCS to come here to sit with the soldiers and they come up with the design concepts. And then these design concepts then go to us engineers. The soldier expresses a need, the designer comes up with the concept, the engineer is there and they can bring in, you know, feasibility. What this unique collaboration means most to soldiers in the field is that somebody is actually listening to their needs. I feel very proud when you go back to school and you interact with uh, your family members. Uh, hold your head high. You served your nation this week. Oh, well, they can tell that we're sincere about it. We really want to make their lives better, safer, more efficient, and um, and they really appreciate it. A half century ago, Detroit was America's arsenal of democracy. It's nice to know that hasn't changed. I'm Steve Garagiola, Local Four.